Welcome South Asheboro Church of God. So good to see you in God's house. Let us just praise the Lord for his goodness, his mercy, and his love. You know, God is a merciful God. Yes. Praise God. A uh, couple of announcements. Uh, there's a favorites list for Brother Jones out in the vestibule. If you want to get one, take a, a picture of it, whatever you want to do. But it's got a list. And also there's a CD sign-up sheet for the revival meetings. If you want to go ahead and sign up, if you want copies of the CDs for the revival. And the revival services start tomorrow night. So, you know, let's go ahead and begin revival tonight. And Brother Jones can just join right in. Uh, good to have Sister Sarah and Sister Mavon with us tonight. Uh, let's take, have your liberty in the Lord. Uh, as we continue to pray, let's continue praying for Pastor Key and his wife. She has cancer and she needs a miracle from the Lord. Uh, pray for revival, a revival of change that will move God's people closer to him. That's what I'm wanting to see. I want to see a revival that will, will be, like Brother Benny's talking about, that Shekinah glory falling. I want to see the Shekinah glory. I've seen it before, and I want to see it again. And God's not changed, so that tells me it's, it's got to be us. So help me, Lord. Help me. I'm talking about me. Help me, Lord. Uh, Brother Eddie, he requested that uh, to, for the church to pray for his work schedule. He's not going to be able to be here again tonight. He, he called me, and he's just so uh, upset. He said, I hate being out of church. I said, I'm glad. I said, some people it don't bother me to be out of church, but I'm glad that it bothers you know, somebody. He said, that, pray that they'll change my work schedule and won't be giving me these long runs on a church night. And, uh, you know, he just prayed for him because he, he said that uh, he, well, he wants to be here, but he can't be here because of his work schedule. But God can change that. He said he was getting, the devil, devil knew he was getting close to getting the Holy Ghost, and he was fighting him. So let's pray for Brother Eddie. Also pray for Brother and Sister Ball's family. He had a 10-month-old grandchild that died. And uh, pray for Hillary, Travis, Kelly, and, and, and Kelly's husband. And pray for the Everett family. They need a touch from the Lord. Uh, pray for Robert Smith. Uh, he's in extreme pain from a hernia. He's awaiting a surgery. So pray for him that God will work it out, and he'll be able to get that surgery and get some relief. Pray for Joanne Sanders. She needs a healing touch in her body. And pray for those in Ukraine. Does anybody else have a prayer request that wasn't mentioned? Yes, pray for uh, Kevin Brady. And let's pray for Joey, uh, Brother Dean Scowa. Yes, Sister Angela. Your grandchildren? Yes. 
play, play for this with Sarah's grandchildren. Yes, pray for Joshua and Sister Angela. Let's stand and go, Lord, in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we come to you today. We thank you, we praise you, we love you, Lord, because you are God. You always will be God. You change not, Lord God. Lord, we see the change has got to be in us, Lord God. Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you, Lord God, that you are faithful to hear our prayer requests. We have us to bring our requests to you, Lord God. Lord God, ask us to be together in a mighty way, Lord God. Out your spirit in a mighty way, touch his request, touch his request, Lord God. 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 Touch his request, Lord God
we're singing oh what shout you know people are, uh, you know they get nervous and everything because we're singing shout you won't feel at home in heaven because we're going to sing and shout forever praise god hallelujah, hallelujah. let's continue to worship and give and get our ushers come at this time and receive the evening offering thank you, Jesus. praise god hallelujah thank you lord brother Jalen, come and help us out there brother Brother Jalen, would you pray with us time of worship? God richly bless you for your faithfulness and giving. This time, we pray for Sister Sharon and I as we come to minister some song. Amen. Bless the Lord. Praise God. The woman brought to Jesus who was taken in her sin. I was so ashamed of what I'd done and where I'd been. Well, justice called for famous that was more than I could give. When mercy smiled upon me, saying, I forgive. The sweetest words he ever said were, I forgive. Yes, sin of sin was wiped away, and I The sweetest word he ever said for I forgive. Now if you're tired of living with the wrongs that you have done, come on home to Jesus, you know he's a cleansing one. In his arms he'll hold you and you've just begun to live. When you hear him gently whisper, I forgive. The sweetest word he ever said for I the way that I could live. Well, like the bar where he told about a mansion he would give. The sweetest word he ever said were I forgive. Oh, sweetest word he ever said were I forgive. Yes, sin of sin was wiped away that I could live. Well, like the bar where he told about a mansion he would give. The sweetest words he ever said were I forgive. Now if you're tired of living with the wrongs that you have done, come on home to Jesus, you know he's the cleansing one. In his arms he'll hold you and you've just begun to live. When you hear him gently whisper, I forgive. The sweetest words he ever said were I The sweetest words he ever said were, I forgive. Oh, the sweetest words he ever said were, I forgive. Yes, sin of sin was wiped away that I could live. Well, like the bar where he told her about a mansion he would give. The sweetest words he ever said were, I forgive. Like the woman brought to Jesus who was taken in. Sin. I was so ashamed of what I'd done and where I'd been. Well, just as called for payments, that was more than I could give. When mercy smiled upon me, saying, I forgive. Well, the sweetest words he ever said were, I forgive. This sin of sin was wiped. 
like the way that I could live. Well, I like the part where he told me about a mansion he would give. Well, the sweetest words he ever said were, I forgive. Oh, the sweetest words he ever said were, I forgive. Yes, sinners then was wiped away that I could live. Well, I like the part where he told about a The sweetest words he ever said was, I forgive. Praise God. That's the sweetest words one can ever hear is, I forgive. You know, people, they'll, they'll say, well, I forgive you, but they don't forget it. Really, they haven't forgiven you. But when Jesus forgives you of your sins, he casts them in the sea of forgetfulness, never to be remembered anymore. Praise God for those sweetest words, I forgive. Praise God. This time, I'm turning to service our pastor, Brother Sheldon. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Sheldon. Everybody stand, please. Let's give God a good hand of praise. Stand all over this congregation. I want you to thank him because you've been forgiven. You've been washed by the blood of the Lamb. There's nothing that can wash away your sins except the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm glad for that blood that was shed at Calvary's cross. I'm glad the blood has not lost its power today. It still saves to the uttermost. We can all think of the worst. Somebody we know that's the worst of our, that we have knowledge of. Things that they've done in sin. I tell you, the blood can still wash them and cleanse them and save them. Make them ever with whole. Can you say praise the Lord? If you have your Bible, 2 Chronicles chapter 7 tonight. We're going to get in the Word of God and enjoy that song. Praise God. Good to see you in the house of the Lord on a Wednesday night. Glad you didn't let the storm stop you. Amen. I want to have a storm in here. I want to have one tonight. I want to have one this week. I want to see heaven. My God. Hmm. My, my. Hmm. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, I want to see a storm come through this place. The wind of the Spirit to blow, the rains to fall, the fire to fall in this place. I don't know how you feel about all this, but I just, I've told Sister Shelton, I believe, I just feel like something good's about to happen. I feel it in my spirit. I felt it. Through our time of praying and fasting for this revival, this, these coming days, I just feel like something good's about to happen. And if you'll put forth a little bit, you'll get a whole lot back in return. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 tonight. Love you for being here. Love all those watching online. Thank you for being a part of this service tonight. Appreciate Brother Charlie moderating the services for us. Thank you, Brother Charlie. Appreciate him. Amen. All of you, we appreciate you coming. And uh, we want to just let God have his way tonight. Amen. I want to see the Lord do some great things. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Let's pray, please, Father. If you're able to, lay your hand on somebody beside you, please. And ask God just to touch them tonight throughout this week of revival. Lord, we bless you. We thank you for the joy of being in your house. Lord, I believe that we could say and we should be able to say that there's no place on planet earth that we'd rather be than where we are right now in the house of God. I thank you for the wonderful singing, Lord, the anointed singing. No, oh, that causes that wheel in the middle of a wheel in our hearts to begin to turn, Lord. I thank you for the Spirit of the Lord that I feel and sense here tonight. We've already prayed in the prayer meeting on Monday night. We've already bound everything and anything, any kind of spirit. Shut up, my, my, come, my, hi. Any kind of spirit that would try to hinder these meetings. Anything that's already set itself against these meetings, God. I pray that it's already been put to flight in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that we'll take our liberty in the house of God. Oh, that we'll worship you. 
will exalt you. Lord, we need you tonight. I need you touch tonight, God. Can't preach without you, Lord. Don't know what to do without you, God. Don't know how to do it without you. Don't know where to begin without you, Lord. Need your touch. Need your help tonight. I pray, Lord, that you'll just settle me right here. I pray that you'll just clear my mind right now. Oh, let me be led by the Spirit tonight, God. Help us not to grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Help us, Lord, to be sensitive to the direction of your will and the Spirit of the Lord in this house. Save souls, God. Sanctify, fill with the Holy Ghost. We just thank you and love you for it all. Lift up your hands and thank him tonight. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Sister Sarah, Sister Mayfarm, we love both of you. Appreciate you. These are good, good ladies. Seasoned saints of God. Amen. Never have changed as long as I've known both these sisters. They're exactly the same. That's a testimony today, my friend. My, my, ha, ha, my, hi. I do feel the Holy Ghost here tonight. That is a testimony. That is a testimony today. Second Chronicles 7, verse 14. The Bible says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, do we pray and seek his face? The Amplified says it this way, crave and require of necessity my face. That means that I can't live without him. I can't live without seeking him. My people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and crave and require of necessity my face, pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. It's not a matter if he can't, it's that he won't until things are right. But when they're right, he said, then, then I'll move. Then I'll hear from heaven. And will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Can you give him a hand of praise as you're seated tonight? <laughs> ah, my, my, my. Hallelujah. Well, I don't want to get in a hurry and just, you know, get on beyond this thing here tonight. I have been so excited, Brother Scott. I always get excited during revival, the scheduled times of meetings. But I have been so excited about these scheduled meetings this week. I hope you have too. I hope that there's an anticipation and expectation of great things to take place. Amen. I want to preach to you for a little while. I'm not going to preach a long time. I want to get in these altars tonight and, and do what he said, seek his face and pray. I want to preach to you tonight on God's promise of revival. God's promise of revival. I believe that the cry rising from the true church today should simply be that, a cry for revival. I believe that the true church should have a strong desire for an old-fashioned outpouring of God in our midst. Brother Benny alluded to it just a a few weeks ago, a few services ago, about his hunger and desire. All these years of serving God, and he's hungry for for a move of God. Brother Charlie said in the preliminaries tonight, he wants to see that glory of the Lord to fill his house again in such a wonderful and marvelous way. We preach about it. We teach about it. We sing songs about it. We talk about it. uh, But we're in a crisis hour. We're in a crisis time where there must be more than just singing songs about revival. There must be more than just preaching about revival. The Sunday school teaching from the stands about revival. um, But there must be an earnest cry from the hearts of the people of God 
for a real heaven-sent revival in this hour. I want to say this to you just as, you know, as bold as I can here. We cannot put it off to another meeting. We can't afford to put it off till next month or next year. We can't just wait till a more convenient time, but we must have revival right now. I said we must have revival in the church, and we must have it right here and right now. We're not just talking about a revival of, of a nation here. We're not talking about a community revival or a, a revival of the neighborhood. There's a lot of focus, and I didn't come to throw stones at anybody. I'm just telling you there's a lot of focus on that out there. When before anything can happen out there, we've got to have revival in here. Before we can make a change in that community, I'm talking about spiritually, we can clothe them and feed them, uh, and they still die and go to hell. But before we can reach that community or that neighborhood or this society, there has to be a revival in the church of a living God. And I believe that there must be a cry for a personal revival for every child of God. It has to be more than, Lord, uh, revive my brother. Lord, revive my sister. But there has to be a strong urgency in the heart of every child of God. Uh, Lord, revive me. Revive your work in me. I wonder how many in this house tonight and those you're watching online, you can talk back to me, it's all right. I wonder how many would say personally, Pastor, I need a revival in my life right here and right now. Just as Jacob wrestled with the angel of the Lord in Genesis 32, and he declared there in that wrestling match, his hips been knocked out of socket. He, he's not ever going to walk the same. He's tired and he's weary from that fight. But he said in verse 26, he's desperate for a move of God. He's desperate for a touch of God. He said, I will not let thee go uh, except thou bless me. I wonder how many would declare the same thing like Jacob. I'm not going to turn loose of you, Lord, uh, no matter what it costs me uh, until I have the revival that I need in my life. No matter the price, no matter the cost, uh, I'm going to hold on. I'm going to press in uh, until I receive a heaven-sent revival in my own personal individual life. The word revival comes from the Latin word re. It means again. And the word vivo, which means to live. Revival literally, literally means to live again. The question's raised, where do we find revival? I can tell you, friend, uh, we, revival does not just come from great preaching. Revival does not come from people being saved around the elders. This brings excitement to the church, but not revival. Revival does not come from huge and large crowds and attendance. Uh, you know, that, that might bring excitement as well, but revival never comes this way. We start the schedule meetings with Brother Jimmy Jones tomorrow night. But Brother Jimmy Jones, as great a man of God as he is, greater preacher as he is, he cannot bring revival with him this week. Nor can any other evangelist or preacher or pastor. Revival is found in people who love the Lord Jesus Christ in a deep and a powerful way. Charles Finney said in a book called Lecture Notes on Revival, Finney describes revival this way. He said, it is a new beginning uh, of obedience to God. And I can tell you, friend, that's what we need uh, in this church generation more than ever. Uh, we need a new obedience to God. I would dare say that there's some of us, even under the sound of my voice right now, You've been living where you are for a long time. You've been on that same ground. Not to say you're not living right, but there's higher places that we can attain. There's higher ground that God wants to bring us to. There's a deeper experience that God wants us to have in Him. 
when, when that reviving comes, when that desire for a deeper experience with God uh, and we come before the Lord that way uh, I tell you friend it's God's good pleasure uh, to move us upward and forward uh, in our experience with him can you say amen Leonard Ravenhill said most people in the church do not need more light they just simply need more obedience I believe when we come back to this blessed book the word of God we begin to walk in obedience to the word of the Lord. I'm not talking about just saying amen with it when it's preached. Uh, not just being able to quote scriptures. Uh, not just toting that Bible under your arm. Uh, but obeying it with your whole heart. Uh, what the word of God says to do, uh, I will do. Uh, what the word of God says not to do, uh, I will obey it uh, and I'll not do it. Can you say amen? I believe, my friend, that, that the light's been shown in, in many of our lives uh, and simply because there's things that we don't want to lay aside. There's things that we don't want to part with. Good things and bad things. Uh, maybe things that are not even necessarily sinful, uh, but things that God has dealt with your heart over to lay aside uh, so that you can have a stronger and deeper relationship with Him, uh, so that you can be closer to Him. Uh, I just tell you, it's time now uh, to run into that light uh, and obey that light and walk in the Word of God uh, with a sincere heart unto the Lord. Uh, I believe that when people begin to obey the word of God when we begin to do what this book says and we're more than just hearers only but we align ourselves with the word of God I believe we can see revival break out again I don't believe it's too late for revival in a time like this I still believe there's a God on the throne I still believe that God wants to revive his work in our lives again. I, I believe that God wants to open up the windows of heaven uh, and pour out his spirit uh, upon us in a divine way uh, that will strengthen the church uh, of a living God. Uh, I'm just telling you tonight uh, revival can come uh, and revival will come. Uh, I believe that God can revive us again. Uh, somebody give him a hand of praise tonight. Uh, Hallelujah to God. We need revival, Brother Scott. We don't need more plans and programs and gimmicks and games in the church. We need revival in this hour. The Bible shows us that God promises us that we can have a real revival. We find the promise of that revival. In the scriptures I've shared with you here this evening, 2 Chronicles 7 and verse 14, God said, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Here we find a promise from God himself uh, that if the church, if his people, he said, if my people, uh, which are called by my name, he's not talking to the sinners uh, in the community. He's not talking to the ungodly out there in that world. He's not talking to those sitting in a bar room. Not calling on those uh, that are in the drug dens and the prostitutes. Uh, but he's talking to the church of a living God. I'm telling you that revival always begins with the church. Revival is for the church. Revival's not for that barroom crowd. Revival is not for that drug addict. Revival is not for that prostitute on the street corner. Revival is for the church of a living God. Revival always begins with God's people. If my people which are called by my name. He shows us here that if we will do our part, then God's going to come along and he's going to fulfill a promise that he makes at the latter part of this verse. I want us to look at this verse tonight. 
So there's no confusion here uh, of what the requirements are of the church uh, in order for us to have a real revival. First of all, he said, if my people will humble themselves. The Bible tells us clearly that God's people must be broken. We must be humble. Uh, we must be modest before the Lord. There is no room in the church of a living God for arrogance and pride and being swelled up with ourselves. We have to come to the realization and understand and not just say it from our mouths but believe it with all of our heart that we cannot do anything outside of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, friend, I can't preach without Jesus. You singers that get up on this platform, no matter how good you may sound, how talented you may be, you cannot sing without Jesus. The musicians here, no matter how good you may do it, that you cannot do it without Jesus Christ. You and I must realize and humble ourselves that it is still in Him that we live and move and have our very being. I've got to humble myself and say in all honesty, Lord, if it's going to happen, it'll happen because you did it. If it's going to come to pass, it'll not be because of me. It'll not be because of you, but it'll be because of Jesus Christ. Somebody ought to shout amen tonight. We need to humble ourselves and declare, amen, I can't do anything without Jesus Christ but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me somebody give him a hand of praise hallelujah to God and I feel good in my soul here tonight we have to come to the place again and sometimes God has a way of humbling us down Sometimes God has a way of putting us in a place to, until we come back to the to the to realization and humble ourselves and say, God, I can't do anything without you. I need your help each and every day. We can do absolutely nothing on our own. We can do absolutely nothing of ourselves, but it's all done through Jesus Christ. James said in James 4 and 6, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. I believe you'll agree with me here tonight. I believe every one of you will, uh, that we all need God's grace in our life every day. I need those mercies that are new every morning. I need the grace of God each and every day. And not just on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, throughout the week. But I need him every second of every day. I can't walk unless he holds my hand. I've got to humble myself and realize that everything that will be done in and through my life, it will not be because of me, but it will be because of Christ who lives within me. Can you shout amen? I've watched down through the years as Pentecostal people who were spiritually arrogant, people who looked down upon others because they were not where they were with God. I've seen church people who thought they were in control. They thought could nobody sing like them. I've watched preachers uh, who thought nobody couldn't preach like they could. Uh, I've watched people who thought in the church uh, that if they didn't do it, uh, it could not happen. But I want to tell you, friend, uh, God resists such an attitude. Uh, I've said God resists that kind of pride. Uh, God resists that kind of arrogance. Uh, the people of God must humble ourselves again uh, under the mighty hand of God. Uh, if we're going to see revival, uh, it'll not be by a preacher uh, that brings it in a suitcase. Uh, you won't sing it down. Uh, you won't shout it down. Uh, if we have revival, uh, it'll be because God showed up uh, in the midst of his church uh, and God breathed uh, new life into the people of God. Hallelujah to God. When God's people are humble, the Bible says God is then drawn to them. But where pride is present, 
God resists them. The word resist means to oppose, to range oneself against, to exert force in opposition. God resists the proud. Proverbs 11 and 2 said, When pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. Proverbs 16 and 18 said, Pride goeth before destruction, and in haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 29 and 3 says, A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. We must, listen, that was what caused Satan. He swelled up with pride. He said, I know what I'll do. He wanted the worship God was getting. I will ascend above God. I'll set my throne above his. Amen. We have to resist the temptation that he offers us. That it's us that's doing it. It's us that's in control. It's us that's able to live holy. It's me that's able to walk it right. I just want to tell you, friend, you can't say yourself you can't make yourself holy if it's gonna happen it'll be Christ that lives within me somebody raise your hands and praise him in his house this evening we must resist that kind of pride we must humble ourselves or the Bible said God will resist us and revival will never come Matthew 18 and 4 Jesus said Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Those little babies right there, those little children, they can't do anything for themselves. They depend on that mom and daddy. They can't feed themselves. They can't change themselves. They, they can't do anything right now for themselves. They depend completely on that mom and dad. If that mom and dad doesn't feed them, they'll die. That mom and dad doesn't change them. They'll lay there in that mess. Jesus said we must become as little children. That means that we are totally dependent on Christ. We are totally dependent on God. Amen. He's going to be the one to feed me. He's going to be the one to clean me up. He's Listen, if I'm a holy vessel, it's not because of my good works. I'm holy because of the one. It's holy that lives on the inside of me somebody say praise the Lord we must humble ourselves as little children and again realize that it's in him that I live it's in him that I move it's in him that I have my very being I need Jesus Christ now more than I've ever needed him before hallelujah to God Luke 14 and 11 he said, For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Peter said in 1 Peter 5 and 6, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he might exalt you in due time. God said, If my people shall humble themselves, we need to kneel before the king again. We need to humble ourselves before God again on bended knee one more time and tell the Lord, Lord, I need you now more than ever. If we've ever, that song they sing, if we ever needed the Lord before, we sure do need him now. I said we sure do need the Lord right here and right now. God, help me to humble myself and recognize I can do nothing of myself I can do nothing on my own if it's going to be done it'll be through Jesus Christ it'll be through the Lord of glory how we need him now in our midst how we need God to rend the heavens and to come down in the midst of the church in this day if my people will humble themselves I need you, Lord, because I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Then he said, if my people will pray and seek my face, we need to pray, saints of God. 
We need to seek the face of God Almighty. You listen to me. If we do not seek God's face and pray daily, every single day, there is no time to take days off. There is no time to become spiritually amnesic and, and forget my prayer time today. There is no time to forget to get along with God in His Word. And we have to do it every single day. You listen to me tonight. If you and I do not pray and seek God every single day, we're going to end up drifting away. And we'll find ourselves spiritually destructed. We'll find ourselves in a spiritual mess. You listen to me. There's no more time to make complaints. There's no more time to make excuses. There's no more time to say, I don't have the time. You better make the time each and every day uh, to get along with God Almighty uh, and to pray uh, and to seek His face. Uh, and when we do this, my friend, uh, the Lord of glory will show up. Uh, he'll come to where you are. Uh, he'll hear your cries. Uh, he'll answer your prayers. Uh, he'll move in your midst. Uh, he'll revive you right where you are. I need to say this tonight. There are some of you that stop praying and seeking God's face daily the way you should. I want to tell you, you're gambling with your soul, sir. You're playing around with your eternal soul, ma'am. There's a devil out there who's playing for keeps. There's a devil that wants to distract you from your prayer time. There's a devil that wants to rob you of your time uh, in the Word of God uh, and then pat you on the back and say, there, there, uh, it's all right. God understands that. Uh, I want to tell you, friend, uh, if we've ever needed to seek the face of God Almighty, uh, if we've ever needed to turn that television off for a little while, uh, lay that iPhone down, uh, amen, tell the family, uh, we'll see you in a little while uh, and get along with God. Uh, it's in a time like this if we really want to see revival come if my people will pray and seek my face seeking God involves determination I've got to be determined that every day I'm going to seek God I've got to be determined every day I'm going to get along with God. I'm going to get in His Word. I'm going to draw strength from Him. I'm going to get close to Him. I've got to be disciplined. That's the problem. People are not disciplined. We've got to a stalemate. We've got to a place where everything else, you know, comes before that time in prayer. Other things take the place of our time in the Bible. Oh, I'm going to say something a little coarse and we're going to move on here. Even to the point uh, where even when we pray a little bit during the day uh, and, we, and we read a few passages of Scripture, uh, we satisfy ourselves with that. Uh, but it's going to take more uh, than, than just saying a few words to God during the day. Uh, it's going to take more uh, than, than just reading a chapter uh, in the Word of God today. Uh, I'm just telling you, uh, we've got to be like that little woman uh, who had the issue of blood. Uh, I'm going to press my way into Him. Uh, I need I need revival. I need God to touch me. I need God to awaken me. I need God to move me up. I need God to sanctify me. I need God to baptize me with the Holy Ghost and fire. We must press our way in until we touch the hem of His garment and revival flows in our life. Reach your hands and tell Him, Lord, revive me again. Revive me again. If my people shall humble themselves, if my people will pray and seek my face, we need to pray again, child of God. It's life or death. And I have to see it that way. It is literally spiritual life or death. I've got to have a prayer life. I've told you before, every person that I've ever dealt with that backslid, 
I've always asked the same question to them. Those that were beginning to drift away, how's your prayer life? I can't tell you the number of times down through the years I've asked people that. How's your prayer life? I already know the answer. I want them to tell me, how is your prayer life? I'm struggling. I don't think I want to serve God no more. Start missing services. Lose their desire. How's your prayer life? And I'm just telling you 100% of the time, the response is always the same. Well, I know I should pray more. I know I'm not praying like I should. There's your problem. You got to fix that. I've got to get that right. I've got to obey the word. I've got to pray without ceasing. I've got to give that time every day. Not just to get it over with. Not just to raise my hand in service to say that I did it. But I've got to be disciplined in seeking the face of God Almighty. If I'm going to have a revival in my life. Somebody say amen. Acts chapter 2 in that upper room. On the day of Pentecost, they were in a prayer meeting. They prayed for 10 days. I'm going to try to just move on, not be too rough right here. I wouldn't say it if God hadn't dealt with my heart over it today. They were in a prayer meeting 10 days to have revival. Most pastors will tell you the same thing. You can ask nearly every pastor, and they'll tell you that one of the most difficult things to do is to get people to come out to a prayer night. I'm not picking on anybody. I'm not preaching this because we had prayer night Monday night. I'm saying it because God dealt with my heart about it today. We have in this local church, I don't know other churches, but in this local church, I asked you at the beginning of this service and you watching online. I asked, I, how many here say I need a revival? I believe nearly every hand went up. In our prayer time, our prayer meetings, uh, we have about attendance of about 25 to 35% of this local church shows up one Monday night a month. 25 to 35% depending on, you know, the Monday night. I, I, listen, I, I didn't come to beat you up. I didn't come to do anything like that. I, I'm just telling you there's times you can't be there. I understand all that. I, I'm just telling you I, if people really mean what they say, I, if it really comes down to life or death, I, if it really means I, I've got to have a revival or I'm going to die, I, I've got to have a move of God in my life. I, I'm tired of struggling. I'm tired of just getting by. I'm tired of just, you know, all just weak all the time. I'm tired of not my fire burning bright. Amen. Prayer has got to become a discipline again. Prayer meeting has got to become important and vital in the life of the church and of the child of God. I'm just telling you, if we're going to have revival, his people have got to pray and seek his face. But if we will, he'll show up, he'll come down, he'll move, he'll revive us one more time. Hallelujah to God. It has to be life and death. The altar must become sacred again. The prayer closet must become important again. Your prayer room must be more important than your TV room. Your prayer room must be more important than your kitchen. Your prayer room must be more important than your bedroom. The prayer room must be the most important thing in your home. Say amen to me somebody or say oh me. The altar in the house of God. It can never just be a form where we just go say something and get up and go back to our seat. We have to seek the face of God Almighty. Listen to me friend. We're in a crisis hour. We need we, we listen. It's more than need. We must have revival. We've got to have God to breathe life in us again. 
again. Uh, we need heaven to come down. Uh, I'm excited about Brother Jones getting here, uh, but I got to have something in this service tonight. Uh, I'm going to need something tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to need it on Friday. Uh, I'm going to need it next week, next month, uh, next year time stands. Uh, I've got to be revived again and again and again. God told us how to have it if we'll just obey Every time that early church had a prayer meeting in the book of Acts, revival came. Acts 4 and 31, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and spake the word of God with boldness. We've got to be known to be a praying people again. I don't want to just be known as being a conservative church. Thank God for that. I don't want to just be known as being a wholeness people because we dress a certain way. Thank God for that. But I want this church to be known. I want to be known. That's a praying man right there. Those are praying people right there. It shows in their life. Their tree, they're not, the fruit of that vine's not dry. It's not bitter. Amen. It's light. It has life in it. That fruit is growing. There's something happening in that life. And until we come back and shake off the tire. I know we don't feel good sometimes, but we got to press on beyond our feelings and we got to get in that prayer time and we got to touch God because I need God to touch me. If my people will pray, seek my face, if we'll humble ourselves, if we'll begin to seek God again. We'll see revival come. I've told you, the devil never fights you when you sit down to watch the television. He'll never try to distract you from that. He don't never try to distract you when you're on that two Facebook, fuss book, and whatever you use it for. He don't never try to interrupt you on there. He never tries to cloud your mind while you're on there. He don't ever bother you, but when it comes time to pray. There'll be a thousand different reasons why you can't pray right now. There'll be a thousand different things that'll flood your mind trying to distract you. But that's where we have to be soldiers of Jesus Christ. And that's where we have to be determined. I'm going to dig in right here. I'm going to press right on in. I'm going to pray till my mind is clear. I'm going to pray till I feel God. I'm going to pray till the Holy Ghost prays through. Come on and say amen to me. I'm going to pray till the Spirit begins to pray through me. I'm going to pray till I'm revived in my spirit. I'm going to pray till the answer comes. I'm going to pray. I'm going to seek God because God promised me when I do, He'll send revival in my life. Somebody give Him a hand of praise. My God. He said, if we humble ourselves, if we pray and seek his face. And then he said, if we turn from our wicked ways. You talk about wicked ways and you automatically think out there in that world. But remember who he's talking to. He's talking to his people who are committing wicked things. I can tell you, friend, in the years of pastoring, there are things I wish I hadn't known about people. Say amen, Sister Amy Shelton. There's things that I wish I had never known about certain people. Nobody here. But people that I've heard people say, oh, there's such a godly man. Oh, there's such a godly woman. She loves the Lord. Oh, great God. And I know the truth. Because I deal with the things behind the scenes that you don't see. And I'm thinking, that, that woman's full of the devil. That man's full of gall. That man's wicked. Sometimes it's better you don't know those things about people. Amen. Some of the wicked things we've dealt with with people that are supposed to be Christians, things that would cause you to, how in the world, I've said it before, how in the world could you do something like this and you're supposed to be a child of God? 
if my people will turn from their wicked ways. There is a wickedness, wickedness that goes on among the church, uh, among people on the pews today. There are people that sit on church pews. There are people that sing in the choir. There are people that hold jobs in the church uh, who practice sin daily. They, they, they are involved in sinful things, wicked things, uh, and they go and act like everything's all right. But let me tell you something about this God, uh, this holy God. Uh, God hates sin. Uh, I said he hates it. Uh, how do you know he hates it? Uh, he hates it enough, Sister Sarah, uh, that he sent his son uh, to suffer such shame on that cross uh, and such pain on that cross uh, so that you and I could be forgiven uh, of sin. That's how much God hates it. Uh, and God commands and God demands uh, that we repent of our sins uh, and we turn from our wicked ways uh, and we walk upright before him uh, and we walk the paths of righteousness uh, and we live holy lives uh, as Christ lives through us. When David had sinned in his life, the Bible said he fell all alone. He, he was away from God. He lost his joy. When Israel refused to sin, to deal with their sin, they lost their battles. Weakness comes to us when we do not deal with sin in our lives. And if we don't deal with sin in our lives, eventually it will destroy our eternal souls. People can play the part and do the churchy thing, but God looks on beyond the outward and God looks directly at the heart of men and women. When we look at our lives, we have to come humbly before God. When we look at our lives, we have to ask God to give us a new hunger for Jesus Christ in a deeper way. That way they sing that hymn here, and I'm going to get them to do it here in just a little while. Lord, I want to love you more. We have to ask God to give us that desire that I'll have a deeper hunger for Jesus Christ. When I have that deeper hunger for the Lord, I'm just telling you, friend, I'm going to automatically move up with Him. I'm, I'm going to position myself uh, that I'm closer to Him. Uh, we need to speci specifically ask God uh, to change our lives. Uh, you say, Brother Shelton, I'm doing all right right now. Uh, but every one of us, there's nobody in this house tonight uh, that can say I'm as close to God as I can get. Uh, there's room for all of us to move up. Uh, there's room for all of us to move closer. Uh, we have to ask God to change us. Uh, and then we have to be complete willing uh, to obey God in every area of our lives. Our repentance must be without restraint. David prayed in Psalms 59 verse 9 and 10. Hide thy face from my sins and brought out all mine iniquities. Clean in me, create a, in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. We have to be determined to keep worldly distractions out of our lives. Worldliness will ruin your relationship with God. I said worldly living will ruin your relationship with a holy God. We have to be determined to keep our focus on our relationship with Jesus Christ. Let me say something to you young people. It's all right to like that little girl in school. It's all right for that little girl to like that little boy. But you cannot ever let that relationship come before your focus uh, on your relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, husbands, you to love your wives uh, as Christ loved the church. Uh, but you can never uh, let your love for your spouse uh, take the place of your relationship uh, and your love for Jesus Christ. Uh, he's got to be first uh, or he'll not be at all in our life. Somebody shout amen. I got to close. Some folks need to spend more time in God's book rather than all the time you're spending on Facebook. If you spend more time on Facebook than you do in God's book, you're going to miss that rapture. If you spend more time on that social media that <laughs> that social 
soap opera than you do in the Word of God. And you know more about the things on Facebook than you do that book right there. You're going to miss that rapture. Some folks need to spend more time with the Savior and less time on social media. I was talking to a lady this morning at, at Biscuitville. Nice lady. Her name's Sherry. She's a nice, nice lady at the window. And there was a man in front of me. Y'all, come on, get ready to play that song, please. There was a man in front of me at the drive through that I don't know what happened to him. He just kind of had his head down, had his eyes closed, and he just sat there after his order was taken. I don't know if he was asleep or on his phone. I couldn't tell. Then I thought well, something was wrong with him. He just sat there and sat there and said, finally he just kind of looked up and realized and he took on and went on around. And I asked him, I said, what was wrong with that man? Was he asleep? What was wrong with him? I don't know. I said, I took his order. I waited. I kept looking. He never come around. I said, I don't know if he was on his phone or if he was asleep. She said, well, I'll tell you one thing. We got enough people on their phones today. That's all. You said, you take that phone from them, they can't live. Take the cell phone, take the ding, you got an email, ding, you got a text, ding, you got something on social media, ding, somebody on Facebook's left this one, they overrun it, ding, ding. What's the first thing you look at when you get up in the morning? Boy, I've hit a rock here, haven't I? We're talking about wanting revival. And we're more interested in social media than we are the Savior. I'm going to tell you something. If we really get serious about revival, we won't never have one until we get serious about it. We talk about it, not our heads say, man, let's preach. Praise God, that's wonderful. We need revival. We need revival. But we'll never have revival until we really are desperate for revival. And realize if I don't have revival, I'm going to die. If we would get more interested in that book and more interested in Jesus, we'd know a whole lot more about Jesus and a whole lot less about a bunch of junk that means nothing in eternity. We know more about junk than we do about Jesus. Is that too sharp? Am I being too sharp? I ain't been a smart aleck, am I? If your life revolves around your cell phone and that social media and that platform of Facebook and that's all you're that's what you're being fed and what you're being fed what you're being fed and you don't you don't spend more time in that Bible and you don't spend more time seeking the face of God you'll know more about junk than you do Jesus and junk will never create a revival in your life or mine. God knows we got enough junk in the church. We need Jesus in the church. We need Jesus in the church. This is one of the reasons we never we don't have revival. It's because most everybody in churches will tell you we do need a revival. Boy, these times are bad. But they're not willing to position themselves to where God can bring this promise to pass. There must be a turning from wickedness. We have to examine our hearts and lives. We have to make sure there's no areas of rebellion. Make sure there's no wicked ways. There's no spiritual neglect. We have to make sure there's no sinful thinking. There's no uh, feelings or behaviors that we need to repent of. If we do, we need to do it now. We need to repent of our wrong against God. We need to ask God to forgive us and determine that we're going to walk in a renewed life of holiness uh, to God and to man. And then Jesus will forgive us because of the sacrifice that he made at Calvary. God said, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves, pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then he gives us a promise. It is a promise of revival. He said, if my people, if we do our part, then God will do his part. Then, after we humble ourselves, after we have prayed and we're seeking His face, we, we listen, He's revealed sin in our lives. He's revealed areas of our life. If you don't seek Him, you won't know. 
But then he begins to reveal areas of our life that's not pleasing to him, areas of our life that need to be, that need to be changed, that need to be fixed, that need to be corrected. And then we'll be able to turn from those wicked areas of our life. And then he said, then will I hear from heaven. It's not that he can't hear, it's that he won't. But when we do our part, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Revival, stand please. Revival is when Christians get their relationships right with God. That's what real revival is. Somebody said we had revival, we had 12 saved. That's not real revival. Thank God for the life. But revival is for the church to live again. To be revived, you had to have life at one time, and then that life is dwindled down or dwindled away or even gone away. Revival is when life comes into us again. Oh, I got a clothes, but I don't want to. When revival comes, Lord, I want to love you more. Lord, I want to love you more. You won't let little petty things keep you out of God's house. When we get sincere and I walk with God, I won't let little petty things keep me out of the prayer meeting. So easy to adore. I get sincere about wanting revival and knowing it's going to be life or death. I won't let those distractions that are trying to draw me away in my flesh. I won't let those things keep me out of that prayer time daily and that word of God daily. You're so easy to adore. I won't rob God. I'll give God what belongs to Him Lord, first. I want to love you more. The tithe is not the tenth. Lord, I want to love you more. Well, that blew your theology, didn't it? The tithe is not the tenth. You see what it means? Before. The tenth. The tithe is the first tenth. The You're first so tenth. Easy to adore. The first tenth of what you have. That's the time. Lord, I want to it belongs love to you God. More. Lord, How many here would say by a raised hand, Brother Shelton, I need revival? Then I, I really ever need revival. Before. I really need revival. You're so easy to adore. If I have it, Sister Sarah, it won't be because Brother Lord, Jimmy Jones brought it to tomorrow night. This you more. It won't because Lord, I, be, I be because I preach this more. message to you tonight. But it'll be because I've obeyed his before. word. I've been obedient to the word You're of God. So easy to adore. And by obeying him, now I can receive the promise Lord, of his word. His orders are open more. for you to come. Lord, if you're lost, you can be saved tonight. If you're away from Lord, God, you can be restored. You need to be sanctified. God will sanctify you. The sanctifier is here. If you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost baptizes us here tonight. You're so easy to adore. Lord, I want to love you. You say, Brother Shelton, I need a revival. Lord, I want to love you. I'm determined. I'm not going to let him go until I receive from him what I need from him. So easy Let's seek him tonight. Lord, I want to love you more. Lord, I want to love you more than I ever had before. You're so easy to adore. so easy to adore. Lord, I want to love you more.